Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, July 22nd, 5.03 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Market state, we're in a short-term pullback. Check the trend gauge over here. We've got leaders flagged as bearish, yellow sub-arrow. Able to rebuild the 21 over 21 list without much problem after 11 names got knocked off last week. But the fact that 11 names got knocked off last week is really the reason why we've got the red arrow there. We'll go through the new list and, um, of course, the indexes as we progress through the video. Short term, S&P 500 closed below the 21-day moving average last Friday, regained it today. We still have that under neutral. We want to see two closes above there. And ideally, it puts some space between the price and the 21-day moving average. So we're staying on neutral for our short-term trend. This is, we use the 21-day exponential moving average for that trend. Medium term and long term, all five of the major indexes above those levels. So green arrows there. So what happened today after three pretty tough days in the market, it's normal for a relief bounce. And we did get that. But the quality of the bounce improved as the day went along. Tried to sell it off a couple times and buyers showed up. So uh, I am more optimistic than I would have been uh say mid morning late morning based on what i saw small caps gained strength as we went through the day so really what we ended up with by the end of the day uh was a relief bounce across market cap across multiple sectors with 11 out of 12 sectors being positive or sorry 10 out of 11 spider sectors being positive we saw a big growth lead uh, but we also saw value participate so um Expectations got a, a little bit improved based on that, but of course we need follow through not only in the, in the indexes, but on individual names as well. And a lot of earnings reports coming up are going to have, they will have quite a bit to say about that result. So here are the numbers, our 21 over 21 list up by 1.3%, 15 up, two neutral, four down. The big eight rocking today, and this is without participation by Apple, which was down slightly, led by um NVIDIA and Tesla. Tesla up 5.2%, NVIDIA up 4.8%, resulting in a 2.2% average gain. RG8, this is our eight growth ETF composite. Like to see this participating as well. And again, this is uh, another check mark in the column of uh, broad participation. RG8 up an average of 1.6%. S&P 500 opened up seven tenths, sold off back near flat, but rallied. As I said, again, the, the attempts to sell it off uh, proved futile, and uh, that's a good sign. We'll see again. We definitely need to see if we get uh, a follow through on that. But S and P five hundred up one point one, equal weight S and P up point eight. Nasdaq one hundred up one point five, equal weight up one point two. That was the laggard today, up a third of a percent. Mid caps up one point two. Russell two thousand small caps up one point seven. Global diversified sixty forty stock bond up six tenths. Our flagship portfolio protection up 0.76% as we work our adjusted beta back toward one with the break of the moving averages and getting stopped out of multiple stocks. We were on the light side invested coming into today. Let's go to the charts. Here's the S&P 500. You can see the harsh three days down close below the 21, 5,500 level provided support. And we bounced nicely off that today, regaining the 21. Uh, closing basically right on the declining eight-day moving average. Bulls are going to want to see more strength and us getting back above and turning the eight-day exponential slope of the line back higher. That puts short-term strength uh, in the back in the uh, bulls corner. You look at a 30-minute chart here. Well, a 60-minute shows it a little bit better. Uh, this 5,500 level. Uh, that was defended on Friday, not even touched today with the gap up. Uh, that's the key level to the downside. So decent risk reward uh, against that 5,500 on the S&P 500. NASDAQ 100 uh, gapped up, closed near the high of the range, but still below the declining 21 and eight-day moving average. Uh, rejected there 
last Thursday, made a lower low Friday. Uh, decent day. Um, let's take a look at the 60-minute chart there. And the level that jumps out is uh, right around there, 473-ish, close to uh, whatever the low was, uh, 474. That was the low on Friday. You can see that level also held back in uh, late June. And it was uh, a spot where we kicked off the rally back in early June. Uh, so that's a, the key level on the downside to watch. On to the Dow, which lagged today after having uh, some big days last week. Uh, and then a two-day pullback. But Undercut reclaimed the eight-day moving average today. Small cap index started slow on the day, gathered strength as it pulled into this 3,000 level back above the eight-day moving average, and really small and mid bounced about where they needed to, uh, retracing about half of that big five-day up move from the prior week and uh, late the week before. Russell 2000, very similar chart, but above the breakout level, it bounced right off of the eight-day moving average today and regained the 2200 level. Let's look at equal weight indexes quickly, RSP. Is the S&P 500 equal weight undercut but reclaimed the eight back to the top of that base that it broke out of before the uh, pullback? And QQEW equal weighted NASDAQ 100 closing right back uh, slightly above the 21 day moving average. So reclaiming it before uh, the market cap weighting NASDAQ 100. On to the VIX. Big down day on the VIX today after a big week. That's a false uh, move spike there. Uh, from Friday, but down 9.8%, back below that 16 and 15 level. It's got a 14 handle, 1491. We want to see it back below that key 16 level. Uh, U.S. dollar, not a lot of uh, movement today on the dollar. It's into the declining 200-day moving average. How about the precious metals? Uh, gold bounced off the 21-day moving average, closed basically flat on the day. Gold stocks. Uh, inside day, eight day moving average and the um, pivot from this cup base acting as resistance. Now we want to, after a three day move down, we stop going down typical after three days. It's really been the theme of this video. Uh, we want to see that reclaim with some strength, reclaim that 3747 uh, pivot and silver. Uh, much weaker than its gold, uh, the gold counterpart down today, down near the lows of the base. Bitcoin, uh, after five tight days, right around the 50-day moving average, moved out on Friday, higher high today. So nothing but good stuff here. Big Bitcoin conference later in the week uh, where Trump will be speaking. He's a big Bitcoin uh, proponent. Uh, on to bonds, BND, the broad bond index down slightly tight range on the bonds today and really a tight range for the last week and a half. TLT, the long bond, a uh, bit of a wider range, down a third of a percent, uh, hold the 50 day moving average, flip to the yields. If the price is down, the yields up slightly up six tenths and the TNX, not a lot of movement, but up slightly up a half of a percent. So that's the tail of the tape, or I'm sorry, that is our inter-asset correlation chart section. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Uh, Biden dropped out of the presidential race and endorsed Harris. That's the big headline from over the weekend. Day count up one across the board after three days down. Now the moving averages, basically flat with a flat um, slope for the eight-day moving average, 21-day close back above. The slope is basically flat there as well. So we need uh, some more bullishness uh, to turn those back up. Expectations neutral with the mixed tape against the 21, S&P above, NASDAQ 100 still below. Um, sectors, 10 out of 11 sectors, positive, led by semiconductors and tech to the to the downside, oils and cybersecurity as uh, CrowdStrike after the fiasco last week continues to get taken apart. Uh, let me fill these in here. RG8 was up 1.62% today. 
and the 6040 was up 0.59%. So in-house for the portfolio, we bought Bitcoin, IBIT, the ETF, on that uh, move higher after uh, breaking through the, the tight range last Friday. And with the reclaim of the 21-day moving average, we got our um, index exposure back to where our guidelines say it should be by rebuying SSO. Still below 1.0 on the adjusted beta. Uh, if we take the hedges off, we'll be there tomorrow. We'll talk about those hedges in a minute when we look at the charts. Uh, but uh, 0.93. So coming into today, we were watching the S&P versus the 21, able to regain it. The NASDAQ 100 against the 21, not able to regain it. NVIDIA versus its recent range, and it was able to break above, but not get back above the 21-day moving average. So that's something that the bulls want to see. Bottom line on the day, re relief bounce with broad participation, led by big cap growth. Let's get to the charts. And that net, we'll start off with those two with the two hedges that we have in the portfolio, NASDAQ 100. Uh, that's in place until we break back above the declining 21-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. We're down slightly on it now. Uh, we put it on the fail into the 21 last Thursday. And uh, we'll start off with NVIDIA and the charts and see how uh, it broke nicely above that uh, three-day range that we were in uh, and closed near the highs of the day. So this was a key level because right below it is the 50-day slash 10-week moving average. Got up to that level, pulled back, and uh, then broke out late in the day. This is the good news. We, we failed, and then we tried it again, got above it, pulled back, and held it. So this 123 level, pretty quit critical. We really want to get up to 125 to fill this gap, and that'll take NVIDIA back above the 21-day moving average decisively. Right now, it's basically right on it. Um, or it says four-tenths of a, a percent below. It's at 124. We closed at 123.54. So that's what the NVIDIA bulls want to see. If you go to the weekly chart, uh, you can see there's the 10 week moving average riding that up higher, actually close slightly below it last week, uh, but back above it this week. So those are the two small hedges that we have on that will take off if we get the proper price participation. All right. So let's go to uh, the, the new 21 over 21 list and we will show it. Uh, we'll show what was on there last week first. And then uh, we'll show the new one. So there were 10 that carried over, starting with Apple. The, it's the only position we own. That's, uh, we own two individual names still, Apple and NVIDIA, and a bunch of ETFs, broad ETFs. Uh, Apple, the only one that's above the 21. And it did, uh, despite a big price target upgrade, it did uh, underperform today as there was a report that they're spending too much money on Apple TV and not getting the return for it. So they're going to start pulling resources back on that apple has earnings in two weeks all other carryovers from last week palantir height at the top of its base looking pretty good tesla uh we got shaken out on the move down on friday it regained it today they've got earnings tomorrow we'll now wait for the earnings reaction uh to see if we take a position or not gdx holding above the 21 needs to get back above the declining eight day moving average corning uh, still hanging tough after its big move up when they upped their guidance. Uh, Art K, uh, two-day pullback, looking still looking uh, pretty good, and so are the top holdings in there. Coin, higher high today. Weatherford, oil stocks. This is consolidating nicely right above the top of the cup and handle within that pivot plus 5%. Does have earnings in two days, however. Note the relative strength line. Very nice over the last six weeks. XBI Biotech regaining some strength after the three-day pullback. ITB uh, barely pulled back, only a one-day pullback for that after making new highs on Thursday and then reversing, but uh, excellent relative strength over the last two weeks. And this started with uh, the Thursday move with the CPI report two Thursdays ago. So the new ones for this week, Axon. Uh, they're going to be kept busy with uh, the riding that I would expect to see as we go through uh, the presidential cycle here and uh, Antifa and just everything that's going on in the world. There's uh, from a justice standpoint, cops need to have their video uh, taped 
taser is the taser product is really not the big money maker anymore. It's the uploading of all the video from the body cams and um, nice setup here. Second one is KKR. This is an investment uh, management company and just a money making machine. As you can see, uh, got a peg ratio near one uh, relative strength cons confirming the price strength. LNG, since it's moved above the 21 day moving average, it's just been riding the eight day for about four weeks now. Uh, Generac, height, rain, uh, putting in kind of a high handle after this nice cup. TMDX, back on the list after regaining the 21 day moving average. Robin Hood regaining the 21. This was on the list a couple of weeks ago. IoT, one of the software enterprise stocks that held up very well and stayed above the 21 with the software pullback last week. Lantheus, they got a favorable um, reimbursement, uh, reimbursement news about two weeks ago. It had two massive updates and has been consolidating on lighter volume into the eight-day moving average. Uh, Square, uh, Pullback and tightening up right around uh, the three moving averages there, the 8, the 50, the 200, and the 21, four moving averages. Uh, intuitive surgical, great earnings reaction on Friday, higher high today, and Bitcoin adding it back to the portfolio with the breakout on Friday and the higher high today. <clears throat> so that's the 21 over 21 list for this week. And with that, we will wrap it up for Monday, July 22nd. If you'd like to reach out to us, the email is donnarveerasset.com. The phone's 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Email my partner, Dan Stewart, if you're interested in becoming a client. Reminder our flagship portfolio, Growtection, is designed with a dual purpose grow assets during uptrends, protect them during pullbacks. Protect them even more during downtrends. We lighten up as we break moving averages. We reclaim them. We'll reinstate the longs. Uh, sometimes there's some uh, whipsawing that takes place as this happens. That's a cost of doing business. But the good trend pays for them all. If we get ridiculously choppy, we just pull back and wait for things to clear. And that's kind of where we are now with only two individual tickers uh, individual stocks own the rest in uh, ETFs as we wait for the market to decide what if the winners will be going through the summer or will we just pull back due to the uh, seasonal weakness. As I mentioned before, earnings will have a lot to say about that. And with that, I'll wrap it up for Monday, July 22nd. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.